Hey, what's going on everybody? It's been a while since I made a video, so I figured since I'm getting back into playing Minecraft, I'll just make a video on how to install a Minecraft server for Feed the Beast on Ubuntu. So, this video, all of the steps I'm going to go through, I'm going to post in the description, just in case you don't, you know, want to listen to me talk or watch this video. You can probably just follow along fairly well through the steps I'll list down there. A uh, few things to note, I've got Ubuntu already installed and it's a fresh install, nothing has been done on it so far. Um, if you don't know how to install Ubuntu, I guess Google it, I haven't made a video on it yet. But if you would like to see that video, I guess uh, I can make one, it's pretty simple. But without rambling on too much, let's just go ahead and get into installing a Minecraft server. So the first thing we're going to want to do is download Java to our Ubuntu installation. And this is very simple in Ubuntu. The only thing we need to type in here, well, bring up the terminal, in case you didn't see me just do that. Bring up the terminal and type sudo app-get uh, install default-jre. And it's going to ask you for your password for the profile that you're logged into. Just put that in. And it's also going to ask if you want to continue, just press Y and enter. And this is going to install the Java runtime environment for you. It's a lot more, well, I think it's simpler than going to the website, finding the package to download and installing it on Windows. I mean, this is pretty easy. One command and you've got Java ready to go. So once this is done, we are going to open up Firefox. We'll close this terminal. We don't need that anymore. Uh, open Firefox and browse to the Feed the Beast website. So the fastest way to get there is just search in the search bar Feed the Beast, one word. And this first search result here for www.feedthebeast.com with dashes in the middle. Bring it here. This is where you can download all the mod packs, all the server files, all that good stuff that you need. The link we're going to hit is this or download and click Linux. It's going to pop this up. We're going to save that file to our downloads. Okay, looks like it's done. And we'll go ahead and exit Firefox. Yes, close the tabs. So that threw the server files, or not the server, the launcher files into our downloads folder. So we'll go ahead and browse to there download and you see we got ftb launcher.jar in here now instead of just double clicking it we're going to open up another terminal and we're going to change our working directory to our downloads folder so the command for that is cd forward slash home whoa, home forward slash your username which mine i conveniently made to username forward slash downloads with a capital d and now we're in the working directory so to launch that uh, .jar file, we're going to type in java-jar and ftb underscore launcher.jar. And this will install the Feed the Beast launcher to our machine. Just hit apply on that pop-up. Here's the console that pops up. Not really concerned with that. We're going to be concerned with the GUI that's going to pop up after that, which if you've looked for Feed the Beast uh, mod packs on Curse or anything, It'll it's pretty much the same thing, just in Ubuntu version of it. So come on, install, let's go faster. Alright, here we go. So here is our Feed the Beast launcher, you can browse through all the mod packs you want. You're going to want to browse to whichever one you're wanting to install, but in this instance I'm going to look for Feed the Beast Infinity Evolved for Minecraft version 1.7.10. So this is going to be what we're going to install. Now to get the server files, you just click download server. And that's going to pop up a Firefox window. And it should start the download. Oh, here we go. So we're going to select save file. It's 230 megabytes, so it's not exactly a small file to download, but there we go. Our download is started. I don't like that Firefox is always full screen and Ubuntu is really weird about this. I hate this. Come on. Yeah, whatever. Alright, so we got. It says we got one second left on the download. 
There we go, download complete. So we can close out of Firefox, and we can also close out of our launcher because we've got the files that we need. So you can see here in our download folder we have Feed the Beast Infinity Server zip. Now we're going to want to extract the contents of this folder. So I'm gonna make whoa what the hell? Stop that. Stop that. Alright, fuck it. It wants to do what it wants to do, I guess. So we're gonna make a new folder on the desktop. I'm just gonna name it server, you can name it whatever you want. And we're gonna open up our mod pack zip folder. Select all and drag the contents to your new folder that you created. This is going to uncompress the files into our new folder, and we can close out the zip file after we've done this, which this virtual machine must be lagging way behind. Can't even close it, there we go. And we're going to open the new server. So here's all of our Feed the Beast server files that we need. We can also exit out of the downloads window. This is being extremely slow for me. And what in the world is it doing? Alright. In our terminal, we can use the same one that we already had pulled up. Uh, we're going to change directory again to home, uh, username, desktop with a capital D. Why do I keep hitting that button? Desktop and our folder server. So now we are working in our server folder. And the first thing we're going to want to do bef before we do anything else is just go ahead and double click on this EULA text file that we extracted into here. And we're going to want to change this line right here, EULA equals false. We're going to want to change false to true. Can't tell you how many times I forget to do that. And we're going to click save. And we can go ahead and exit out of that. And now we are going to run this uh, ftb install.sh file. There's two files you'll notice, ftb install.bat and .sh. The bat file uh, doesn't work in Ubuntu without installing a third-party application called Wine, which we're not going to get into. They've given us this .sh file, which we can run in Ubuntu. So the command to do that is sudo sh ftb install.sh. It's going to ask us for our password again, input that, and then it's downloading some uh, different files. Now here is kind of an optional step. I like to run this Minecraft server, the default Minecraft server that that command downloaded first. Kind of think of it as installing a Forge server where you download your regular Minecraft first, you run Minecraft that creates all the libraries, sets everything up, and then you run Forge, which, put, which puts its files on top of it. Now, I'm pretty sure that doesn't actually happen here, but I like to run the default Minecraft server first. So, how we're going to do that is we're going to do Java jar, and then Minecraft underscore server dot one dot seven dot ten dot jar. And this is going to boot up the default Minecraft server. This is not the Feed the Beast server, this is just a regular Minecraft server that you would get with the normal game. It's not modified, it's clean. So it looks like it's done in 7 seconds. We can go ahead and exit out of that. And that should, yep, there we go. So now that we've ran that once, now we're going to run the Feed the Beast server. And I'm going to use some custom arguments for this. Um, if you're not you don't know what custom Java arguments are, basically they tell Java, Java launches a virtual machine, I guess, every time you uh, launch a Minecraft server, and you can put in these arguments that tells it how much RAM to use, what its maximum RAM amount is, minimum, and all kinds of stuff. But with this Feed the Beast server, the defaults won't do because by default, Java will run with a maximum RAM amount of 512 megabytes. And this Feed the Beast server will use at least double that. So what we're going to type in is Java dash server and x oh, dash xmx uh, one no 2048 m. So what this is doing is setting the maximum amount of RAM to be used by this process to two gigs, which just so happens to be the maximum of this virtual machine I'm running on. 
The second one is XMS. I'm going to set that to 1024, so half of the first one. To be honest with you, I don't remember what XMS actually stands for. I think it's the minimum amount of RAM. Not entirely sure on XMS, but I usually set it to about 1 gig. Um, there's other arguments that I use, but I'm not going to type them in right now. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and put dash jar on the end of this, and I'm going to use the command no GUI. So there is the full command. Oh, that is not the full command, just kidding. After dash jar, we have to tell it what file we want to actually friggin' open. So ftb server.jar. And then after that, I'm going to put no GUI. Now, what no GUI does is just prevents it from popping up the regular Minecraft uh, server window that you're used to seeing, the white one with the uh, server tick rate and amount of RAM used on the left. I have no need for that window. I don't really care about that window. Um, it's going to do everything in the terminal itself, so it's just not needed. So this is going to take probably a while to start up because for one, for me, it's running in a virtual machine and it's already shitty enough, but uh, two, it's a Feed the Beast server, which has, I don't really remember how many mods this pack has, but it's probably over a hundred. So when this is done, we'll come back to it. Okay, so here we go. It's preparing the spawn area, and it looks like it's done in 39.1 seconds. It definitely took longer than that. Maybe that was just for world loading or something. But here, the server is now running. So the only thing left to do is download the same mod pack on the client system and connect to the server. Now, one thing we're going to want to note before we switch over to the client system is the IP address of this server. So to find that in Ubuntu, just open another terminal and type in ifconfig. Uh, config. There we go. And not the loopback adapter, but this first one that's ENS33. Um, you can see that our IP address is 10.88.88.49, and that's right here, inet address. This is the IP you're going to want to note down. This is going to be what you use to connect to this server. And, I mean, you can, if you have a DNS service running, you can connect to it from the outside if you've set up port forwarding, which I'm not getting into in this video. I think I've covered that twice in other videos. But just note that one down. And now we're going to switch over to the curse client. Should be here. Maybe. There we go. Okay, so if you don't know how to download Curse, just Google download Curse for Windows or whatever you're on, and you'll get a screen like this, home, blah, blah. Go to the Minecraft tab, and right now I have no profiles currently installed. So we'll just click on Browse FTB Mod Packs, because that's the server we're running, and we're going to find the mod pack that matches the server we just created. So for us is FTB Infinity Evolved for game version 1.7.10 and all you gotta do is hit install and it says it's downloading it and if we go back to the Minecraft tab we should see the progress here yep. installing, installing, blah 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 now once that's done all we have to do is launch it and connect to our server that we just created which actually what I'm gonna do is right now I'm going to cut this out, but I'm going to launch the server we just created on a different computer because I do not have enough RAM to run both a Feed the Beast server and a Feed the Beast client on the same box. So I'm going to go back through my steps that I just went through on a different PC and bring that server up to connect to. Okay, so now our mod pack has been downloaded and installed. All we have to do now is click play. And that should pop up, yep, there we go, our launcher window that looks just like a regular Minecraft launcher. And you can see our profile is FTB Infinity Evolve. Now one thing I do like to do is actually edit this profile. And actually it looks like we don't need to. So JVM Arguments is already checked. I don't know if this was pulled from uh, my last install that I did, but 
if this is not checked for yours, definitely check it. And if these are different, change them. So right now the XMX is 4096 meg. So we got four gigs of RAM maximum to be used, which is more than enough. XMS 256 meg, yeah, whatever, don't really care. Um, we can go ahead and save that. So it didn't look like there was anything that needed to be changed, but if your maximum amount of RAM is one gig or definitely less, then change it to at least two gigs of RAM minimum and then hit play. And while this thing loads up, which is gonna take forever on my PC, um, I can go ahead and show you. Well, it's not even responding right now. Uh, this is my arguments that I use every time I launch my server. Uh, I'll just go through this while it's launching. Uh, Java server XMX 4000, well, four gigs of RAM with a minimum of one gig. Uh, this max perm size 512, that is actually not needed anymore. That's a command for an old version of Java. But the rest of these are, I, the way that I understood it is it's like trash cleanup commands. The way it kind of clears out unneeded <coughs> blocks of RAM. Uh, I, I could be wrong, but these are the arguments that I use. This use conk mark sweep blah blah whatever. That's going to be posted in the description, so you can just copy and paste it right in there. Uh, this forge, we can delete that out of there because your file's going to be different. And I always tack no GUI onto the end of everything. But just thought I'd show you that for GWiz's sake because that's what I use. Uh, use it or not, whatever. I think my server is up, maybe. Maybe not, we'll see. All right, we're booted up now. I can make this bigger. Boom. So here's the home screen for our mod pack. It's awesome. We're gonna go to multiplayer to connect to our server. And we're gonna do a direct connect. This is where we'll put in the IP address that we noted down from our uh, Ubuntu machine, which I think was like 10.88.88. It was either 43 or 48 uh, for mine, which I would connect to if I kept that running, but I shut it off. So I moved it to another PC, which should be at 189. I also had to change the port because I've got another live server on there right now. So uh, you don't have to do this. I think it's too. Five five six six maybe or two five six 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 I think don't worry about this part you don't have to do this you just type in the regular IP address unless you have multiple PCs running or not PCs multiple servers running on it so crossing my fingers that that's the right address and port uh, nope it wasn't one second All right, I had the port wrong. It's not two five six six six. It's two five five six six. Join. Logging in, and this is the server that we just made. In case there's any confusion, I just did the exact same steps I walked you through, just on a different Ubuntu box. Oh. <laughs> And there we go. Welcome to Feed the Beast if Infinity Evolved. Well, there you have it. That's how you do that. Uh, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. Holy shit, I'm about to get about to get my face just melted off. Uh, yeah, if you have a request for any other videos, uh, just leave them in the comments and I will try to make them. Holy crap, this is a good seed. I got a, what is this, a, a sand temple right here? Right at the start, got some gardens. Oh man, I am set up. Whew, highly lucky. All right, hopefully this helped. Uh, have a good one.